up lads welcome back to the channel for yet another video and just before we get into today's video i would like to extend a big thank you to all of the new subscribers to the channel i've noticed that there's been quite a few of you joining recently and it really is warm in my heart and i really appreciate it and i really appreciate the support you guys have given me so to everyone who is new here thank you so much for supporting me. Now, if you have clicked on this video, then you are most likely someone who is just wanting to get into sim racing or just starting out in sim racing. Or even if you've got a little bit of experience already and you just want some extra tips here and there. Before we get into it, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button. And if you're new here and want to see more videos like this, then I would really greatly appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And while you're here, why not check out the lovely sponsors over there on the left hand side of the screen? These guys provide for me all of the equipment that I use and the lovely sim racing much that you guys can buy. Also, once you've finished watching this video, why not check out these videos that I recommend here from this channel? We do a lot of sim racing content here and a lot of variety is in place, so go and check out these videos as well. Right, there's a lot of subjects to cover, so sit back, relax, and let's get into it. So the first subject that we're going to get into is the racing sim itself, or what to choose. The sim that you are going to drive in is probably more important than the equipment that you use, because without a driving sim, the equipment is completely useless. Now there is a very, very large variety of racing sims to choose from, and it can be a little bit daunting if you are new to this area of racing games. What I like to do is break things down into three different categories. For racing sims, it comes down to the driver, so it'll go beginner, novice, and experienced. We shall start with the titles that are great for beginners. The racing sim that I would recommend for beginners more than any other racing sim is, of course, Assetto Corsa. Assetto Corsa is fantastic because, one, it is relatively inexpensive when it goes on sale. The physics and the driving mechanics are a perfect mixture for someone who's learning how to control a car and learning how to race around a track. And if you don't know, Assetto Corsa has the capability of allowing mods. So extra cars, racetracks and graphics packages can be added that are outside the standard game. You can download as many mods as you want and most likely you will get a very realistic experience from this sim. This is why I would recommend Assetto Corsa as my number one beginner sim. However, there are other titles. Also in the beginners category, Agree. I would also put Project Cars 2 and Automobilista 2. Now these games are a little bit different from Assetto Corsa. Now what these games offer are fantastic graphics, fairly decent physics and their online capabilities which makes it very easy for you to go and race with your friends. And not only that, these games offer a massive amount of content. If I had to pick one though between the two, I would go for Automobilista 2 because that game is still being developed to this day and it is newer. And if you get all of the DLC to go with it. There is a lot of content in this game to keep you entertained for hours. And one more sim I would like to recommend for beginners is Race Room. Now, if you're on a budget and you can't afford the other games, then Race Room is actually a very good place to start because the game itself is free. And there has been a little bit of a force feedback update recently, which makes the game even better. Now, as standard, the free game has a select amount of content for you to go and try, which is, I think, perfect if you are wanting to get into it. And there is extra content that you guys can buy if you feel like you want to progress further. And not to mention, Race Room has recently added ranked servers, so you can test your skills. Now moving into the novice category, I only really have one game that I can recommend for someone who's gaining more experience as time goes on, and that is Assetto Corsa Competizione. Not to be confused with the Assetto Corsa that I recommended in my last category, this is an entirely different game that is focused entirely around GT racing. The reason why I recommend this one as a novice game is because the competition in this game can be fairly fair and there is a lot of good online racing to be had. The graphics in this game are absolutely stunning and the physics themselves for all of the cars feel pretty fantastic. There is a massive community around Assetto Corsa Competizione and you will always get an online race. Now if you're someone who's feeling a bit nervous about going into these kind of things and want to brush up on their skills a little bit, then you can do offline racing with AI. And also, I would like to recommend you go and watch a friend of mine called Jardier and Dal King. These two racing drivers are phenomenally fast and their streams offer a great insight on how to keep the car under control and how to get the most time out of your lap time on a track. So my only game for this novice category would be Assetto Corsa Competizione. Now, moving on to the experience category, we have two games that I would recommend for experienced sim racers. The first one is R-Factor 2. Now, 
depending on when this video comes out, this sim is on offer for £5 at the moment. And that offer ends on February the 3rd. So even if you're a novice or a beginner, I would recommend going buying this as soon as possible because this is something that you could work up to. Now the reason why this is in my experience category is because this game is hyper detailed. The force feedback in the game is phenomenal, probably better than any other sim on the market, and it is a really good game to be brushing up on your skills with. And recently, there's been a massive UI update which makes the game a lot easier and it looks a lot like Automobilista 2 and that UI is actually not too bad. Before, R Factor 2 used to have a very bad UI which was very confusing and very unfriendly to newcomers, but now it's actually fairly decent. And the game does have developers still working on it, even though it is a bit slow at the minute, the game still gets worked on. And my final game that I would recommend for experienced drivers is iRacing. Now this game comes as no surprise as the one that you need the most experience for, because one, it is very, very expensive getting into this sim. And two, the progression system on this game is very, very difficult. To race with some cars, you need to acquire a certain license. This sim by far has the largest amount of development behind it. The physics on the cars have been excellently done, and all of the race tracks in the game have been laser scanned. Not some, all of them. And the same goes for the cars. This game also has the largest online presence when it comes to online racing for sim races. But it does come with a price. This game you don't simply buy. You pay a monthly subscription to race in this game. And then you have to buy extra cars and tracks and it can get very, very expensive. That's not to say though that you do get some tracks that are free and some cars that are free, but that's if you are paying the monthly subscription. Now this is the game that I would recommend to people once they feel like they are ready to go racing. Because it's expensive and because the progression system in the game is very, very difficult, this is the game I would recommend to an experienced driver who's ready to take on the next step. But I cannot recommend this game if you are new to sim racing at all, because it can be very confusing about what you can race with and what you can buy, and the penalty system in the game can be a little bit wonky sometimes. That being said though, this game does reward you for being a clean racing driver. In order to progress your life since you don't race and try and win and get the best result. What you do is you try and race as clean as possible. You don't crash, you don't go off the track. And that is how your license progression is done in this game. And because of that, this game is not very friendly to beginners because if you go in there and start crashing around, you could potentially get banned. So I can recommend iRacing to those who have a bit of experience and feel like they are ready for the challenge. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed part one of this little series that is going on now. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about sim racing steering wheels and sim racing wheel bases, ranging from all kinds of prices and my recommendations for you to buy. So if you have enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. It would really help me out a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. And while you're here, why not check out the sponsors over there on the left hand side of the screen. Those guys provide for me all of the gear that I use and the sim racing merch that you guys can buy. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you guys in the next video. Have a good night everybody.